Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Well, on good news from the USA, the Australian stock market once again in a surprise move turned to rise. So tonight, we will get into the major world markets and give you our thoughts on how they're all going. For our main topic in tonight's show, we get into five hot stocks that are under $10 that we think are set to rise more than 20%. But more on those a little bit later. First up tonight, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax. Tonight we'll be jam-packed as we answer your emails, take your phone calls, and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the stock market. Hello and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now some of the stocks we're going to cover tonight include South32, IGO, Dexas, AMA Group and many more. I'm Dale Gillam, your host for tonight and joining me is Janine Cox and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening. Tonight, everybody, we have five hot stocks under $10 and I believe are set to rise more than 20% as the market turns. So stay tuned as we'll get into that and more very soon. But first, we need to get into this week's hot stock tip. All righty, Janine. On the screen right now, we're going to Northern Star Resources. Now, I need to put my glasses on to see this. That's um, exciting. Gold is always a nice thing to talk about. Well, gold, because of what's going on in the in the world at the moment, mm. gold is going up, which is really, really good. So you can see here, 18.6% return. Um, currently trading $11.86, up 3.49% um, over the last few days. Lower end dividend yield, but you're going to get the growth out of this stock. And as we go down, you can see here how it hasn't done so well over you know earlier part of this year. But we've seen this move up sort of since October, and I think we're going to sort of be blasting through this area and go higher. But as you can see there, Northern Star Resources is involved in exploration, development, mining, and processing of gold deposits and sales of refined gold from Kalgoorlie. So good looking stock. Um, fundamentals are not too bad, but I think gold is going to be continuing to rise for a little bit longer. I'm not mm. sure what your views are, but let's go and have a look at the Optima chart. What are you seeing? Look, I see something that looks bullish, but there's just a couple of questions I've got over it. Are you going to answer them or are you just going to ask them? Well, maybe a bit of both, but I don't want to interrupt you too much. First oh, okay. of all, overall, yeah. I think it looks bullish. However, in the short term, I think there's a there's a short-term risk to the downside. Oh, short-term risk to the downside. Well, you know, mm. I put a little bit of work, on, a tiny little bit of work on it, not too much. Now we can see here, this is just a basic momentum. I've just drawn a trend line tool or a dash That's line beautiful, isn't above, it? below those. Mm. And you can see here, it's more recently come down to this level. And these green lines are support levels on the stock there. So you can see it hit um, $9.99 on the low there. Bounced right off that. There's the next support level, but these are resistance levels. You can see this big one there off mm. that peak there at 14.44, and other historical sort of support levels off here. So, I think there's good upside. I think once we're breaking through, if we break through that, or if it, it breaks through 14.44, mm. I think it will not only just shake that all-time high of 17.03. I think it'll break right through that. So, what's so, the significance of the lines, the green and the and the red? The support and resistance. So, shouldn't it be the other are way around? Are they the questions you're going to ask? You know, like green at the top and reds at the bottom that's a warning it's like getting exciting is it getting hot when it's getting up that level is it it's it's, it's getting to a resistance level because it's got 43 nearly 44 percent <laughs> to get up to its all-time high so yeah. these are just resistance levels on the travel up now obviously i think this one's going to be a little bit more significant um the, that 1444 mark but even there if we look at from where it currently is to that point there there's still nearly, there's 20% rise in that. Mm. So there's plenty of room for upside should it do okay, start to keep moving on. Now this is the monthly chart. So let's go to the weekly and have a look at that. And say, so looking at the weekly, done a beautiful little pattern. And look at this, just moved mm -hmm. up a few weeks, come down nicely. That's looking textbook to me. Okay, so what if it closes below last week's low? I don't care. 
Short-term downside, isn't it? Well, you ask the question, you can enter it. Well, I think it could. Like, that's the risk, really, if you just right. allow me to have the mouse. Thank you kindly. So this low here, 11.27, if it takes out that low, just wait. I, I still yeah. think that your more medium to longer term yeah, view holds. However, mm -hmm. um, I'd just be a bit wary of that low there, just watching for now. I a, be. a rise through that high there is, is I agree with you. If it mm. does get through that level, then we could at least see it get to 13 or $14 in the short term. Look, I think it can go even higher than that one. I just put a just a basic trend line. You know, there's some really nice support there and it's found it. The only, thing that, only minor thing on it is just that gap there and it you know, possibly could fill that gap. But I think if it breaks through this level here, which is um, and gets through there, especially if it gets through that level there at 12.33, I think it's So you're fine. agreeing with me then, short term downside? No, not at all. <laughs> you, not at all. I just the said gap. the only negative is there's a little gap that, and not all gaps will fill straight away. I can see this is going to so, be a great night. No, no, you're just well, revving up, aren't you? You're allowed to be wrong anytime you like. That's true, I can be. <laughs> well, that's it for our weekly hot stock tip. Dale's hot on the trails of this one tonight. So shortly we'll get into the five hot stocks under $10. But before we do, right now, it is your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. Remember, we prioritise phone callers, so call now on 0392909988. That's 0392909988. Or you can text your question to the number on the screen. Now, remember, the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Well. So... Pick up your phone and dial 92909988. I'd like to talk to you. Not sure about your name, but while you do that, <laughs> tonight is the third Tuesday in the month, which means we're going to take a look at world markets. So let's get into that. All right, on your screen right now is the watch list of the world markets. Now, there's a major world market, so let's have a look at those. All right, um, we've got mostly green at the top of that list, which is exciting, isn't it? So... Unfortunately, Australia is right at the hmm. bottom of that green list at the moment. So perhaps we've still got, if, if major markets are going up and we've, say, got an average of around, what, say, that's 15, 20%, then hmm. it means the Australian market should be the next one to take off. These ones are already done. Well, yeah, well, I mean, what I love about this is the Nikkei and the, and the hmm. Tokyo, they're up 29, 26%. This NASDAQ, the NASDAQ comp, the NASDAQ index and S&P 500, it's on the back of seven stocks. Hmm. You know, those seven stocks, you know, talking about Apple, mm -hmm. talking about Microsoft, you're talking about, um, what do you call it, Google's called now, Alphabet or something, mm -hmm. whatever oh, it is. Yeah. You're talking about NVIDIA mm -hmm. and we're talking about Facebook, which is called something else now, Meta, Meta. whatever. I don't mm -hmm. know. They all, they all, and now we've got X for Twitter. But um, that, it's all on the back of that because mm -hmm. they make up 30% of the S&P 500 index. So yeah, they're, so if they're, the tech side really, slows really down, hard. what you're saying is yeah, that that's going to have a breather as well. It's not a broad, mm. broad, the US market is not broadly not moving yet. up. Mm. Not yet. So to me, looking at that, when you're looking at the Dow Jones up 6.04%, that's, that's more normal, isn't more it? normal mm. because whilst, and, and even on the back of that is some of those stocks are in the Dow Jones um, which are, I know, mm. Apple is, I know, all Microsoft it takes, is. All it takes is for our banks to take off and BHP, yeah. Rio and FMG to keep going. Then Yeah. Mm. But interesting, also the other thing interesting to me is China, China, China. All yep, three all of them the are Asian down. the Asian markets. The Asian markets are down. China has slowed down. There's still issues with China. Mm. A debt crisis in China, so that worries me in terms of that. The longer that hot is held back, though, the, mm. the harder it's going to run when it takes off. That's oh, the look, thing absolutely. To think absolutely. About. So, but they mm. do have a debt problem at the moment. That's why the world is not necessarily liking the Chinese and market. And look, I mean, but, a good yeah. example of that is the RRG graph that you've also got there on the screen, which shows one. where markets are at the moment. Well, it does show where the markets are. That shows most of them are down here in the lagging sector to the S&P 500 but again mm. we're lagging it's those seven stocks and they're not going to keep doing what they've done mm. over the last few years so okay. now we're going to show them a chart well look I just think people should remember what you've just said okay they, what did I just say I forgot because already. it's important isn't it you don't think that they'll repeat what they've done no I don't yeah. think they're going to continue mm. to repeat because they can't how fast they if they get overbought don't they mm. they really they get do. overbought yeah. And look, so, people go on old news, don't they? So they're, they're trying to chase last year's returns all the time. Mm. So what happens if we have a look at, shall we look, what if we look at the US market? Do you want to look at the S&P 500? Absolutely, or do you want, look at the S&P 500. Yep, okay. Not that that's the Dow, keep going, yep, there you I'm go. There, there I am, I just had to find myself there for a minute. <laughs> I've okay, been trying so, to find myself for yeah. years. <laughs> okay, so there's the monthly chart of the S&P 500. Now, can we see that? 
Do you need your magnifying glass I today? I but people at home okay. might. Yep. Now, this chart here, you can see a really strong rise up. That, okay, is what you're saying is, hmm. is the tech side of things pushing the US market. But this looks huge. This, this looks does. like it's going to go through that it high. It does look and huge. Everything else will follow. So if we mm -hmm. see the US market take off through this high, the January 2022, then our market's surely going to be following mm -hmm. on the coattails of all of that as well. Well, you'd think it would, but it, when you're talking about the S&P 500, let's say you, you compare that to Australia, four big four banks went up, mm. BHP, Rio and Fortescue. So there's seven stocks. If those stocks yeah. all took off and we'll went strongly, situation. we'd be in exactly the same situation, mm. even though the rest of the stocks in our market didn't do too much because mm. those seven stocks in Australia is much more than 30% yeah. of how S&P 500. Well, it'll be interesting to see how far, because, I mean, obviously the mm. US has got way ahead of our market. It has, this and this is why I'm thinking the US market, there's a lot of issues around their credit, mm. a lot of issues around debt, there's a lot of issues around real estate, although their CPIs are a lot But they always say that lower. at this point of the cycle, and mm. then we see another big boom down the track. Yeah, 12, well, they've had a stronger go on their later. interest rates. They've got interest mm. rates up at five and a quarter, whereas it's four and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of RBA rates yeah, and cash rates. Uh, their cash rate. So you've got that. So this, their inflation has come down a lot harder than what ours is at the moment. So that's good for them. But then there's a lot of de debt issues in the US, a lot, mm -hmm. um, with banking issues, all that sort of stuff. So yep. I'm not a super bullish on the S&P 500 in well, the US look, market. While the chart, if, you, if that was it a looks stock, great right now. if that was a stock, regardless of the underlying fundamentals, you'd have to say that looks really strong. It looks awesome. As long as you get to the end of the month and it's still closing up to the, towards the top it of the bar. Absolutely, it looks awesome. Mm. All right, that is it for our thoughts on the world markets. We have lots of emails tonight, but before we get into the first one, remember to get your email questions answered live on air in next week's show. You must send your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now let's get into our first question. Okay, Janine, our first email is from Jake, who says, Hi, guys, love your work on the show. Don't currently currently own a position in FDV. It is currently 42 cents and looking to buy in for a long-term investment. What price looks like a good time to buy based off your technical indicators? Thanks, Jake. Look, I'd say any time from now. <laughs> any who's or what? That's nice and quick, isn't it? All right, just wanted to get a, an answer in first. Can but I... If Can I get a dictionary to understand what you just said? <laughs> Any time from now. Just have a look in, um, in the long term, first of all, uh, Jake. So really good question. Interesting stock. It's just closing above a really important level, which these were the all-time lows, December 2016, mm -hmm. before it actually traded lower in May 2023, which I think is important to take note of. Uh, so we'll just mark a line across there put a line in the sand, so to speak. Is this a stock you'd hold long term? No, definitely not. It's not a long term stock, but it could turn into one depending on how it unfolds. Mm -hmm. So so at the moment, it's just showing signs that this is the bottom coming in. It's not 100% confirmed, but it depends on what your risk appetite is, how you would actually decide to enter that. And the best way to do that is to actually determine a set of rules and know how to do some analysis. But I can tell you, I really like the way that that's unfolded. It does look awesome. I would say though, that you can see a similar sort of thing that had mm. unfolded across here. This was back in 2022, the way that it sort of went sideways, it broke out of the blocks, gave the impression that it was rising, but then went south. What I like about this move here is it's actually gone up for a couple of weeks. It's taking a nice little breather here with this low in week ending 17th of November sort of testing the top of that high there, at steady as she goes. Now, if it if it takes off through the peak week ending November 2023, that's a high of 44 and a half cents, then we could see it challenge the prior high. And volume then- gone down you know, the last few weeks. And then it could go anywhere from there. Mm. But volume is what you've identified is not supporting the move at the moment. No, because I mean, the to. thing is to me, what I'm, I'm reading between the lines of what you're saying is it's not so much about where you get in, it's about, how you're protecting your money because mm. um, this could be a sucker's rally. Could be. Um, and so that's really what you're saying here at the moment. Whilst it looks, it looks really, nice. really nice, mm. what you've said to Jake is, well, what are you doing and what rules have you got and what analysis mm. you put around it to make sure that you're getting into a good spot? 
exactly. uh, or getting into a good trade on this. And then how do you protect your money if it goes south against you? Yeah. That's pretty much what you're saying. It's very important. I mean, we want to help like, him I'm stay a mind safe reader. in the market. You've just got that power, haven't you? I know. Sometimes it scares the hell out of me when I meet your mind. As long as you haven't got x-ray vision, I'm happy. <laughs> cool. Is that all you want to say on FDV or you got all more right. to talk about? Um, no, I think that it's a really good stock and i just have a bit of a look at it long, mm. longer term, Jake, in case you haven't already done that from a point of view. But well, look, hopefully it has, yeah. Uh, once it takes out this high here as well, just coming back to the chart briefly before we move mm. on, then we know that the trend is definitely, definitely moving on. up. Cool. Mm. All right, Janine, we do have a text and this one is from Diane and she's asking about a stock um, with the ticket code of LPI. So let's, um, and she also goes on to say share, she entered a bind, or the share entered a binding scheme agreement at 57 cents with code, Codelco, asking our thoughts. Um, I'm assuming she owns it because she's asked that question. I don't know about the scheme. I haven't read anything about it. I'm assuming you haven't because we well, don't look at stocks like that. Look, in this case, I would hmm? just sort of caution these sort of schemes can fall over. I don't know whether it's actually been confirmed. Because it's a non-binding one, non she said, okay. which means they've just made a bit of an, an offer. offer. It's like yeah. you and me saying, I'll buy your car for X dollars and right. then I find another one that's cheap and it's better. Yep, I think that would be a good idea <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, looking at the way that the stock's actually unfolded right now, it's doing nothing. So in the, yeah. the short term, people might be thinking, oh, well, I've got nothing to worry about. But that's not necessarily true, is it? What we've seen hmm. in terms of some of these corporate actions that unfold on the market sometimes, and Dale's just putting a line in the sand there so on the So that's 57 cents there, is which what it wasn't? 57 cents? Yeah, that's I think it? she said, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so basically, this is the interesting thing about those, and you can see, yeah. look at it, it took off through here in the 29th of September. Yeah, so, so how where is was it the that announcement? It, yeah, that's right. I'd be checking back that as well. And how come that the authorities don't look at that sort of thing and say, well, hey, They probably do, but somebody pays here? them off or does something. No, it's you, don't, you can't do the, that these days. Well, I don't know. How many times have you seen some a company come out with an offer and the stock's already started taking off weeks beforehand? Yeah, I know. We do see it. Um, but I can't explain it other I than to say that we can see yeah, it on the chart. You just got to put the date on the 20th on there. of October, which is there yeah. that week. So the biggest volume happens on the last little bit. So, yeah. which is a lot of people mm. trying to get in and grab a profit. I mean, obviously, there's you know, if you own buy the stock here and they're saying a non binding offer at 57 cents, there's mm. four cents there, which is just under 10 percent. Yep. So there's a bit of arbitrage there, but is that really worth it? Well, it's it? uncertainty because normally if it was going to yeah. go ahead and people were pretty sure about that, it would be trading at So if you price. owned this right now, what would you be doing? I'd be taking some money if I'd made a profit on it and not, I'd be seriously thinking about my strategy for what I was going to do. Take your money off the table. Mm. Yep, that's what I Because they, if they plan. knock back the offer mm -hmm. and the, or they withdraw the offer, it'll, it'll go south. Yeah, it's about how certain are you that this could go ahead. And sometimes with these companies, mm. they release some really nice information to explain all of that. But mm. I'd be wanting to see the board, what the board says. So there's not much more upside, but plenty mm. of downside if they reject it. That's what you're That's saying. That's the challenge, unless there's another party in the wings there. Mm, well, there could be. There's could always be. another party always in the wings. Not, for not that. always, but anyway. Well, it looks like, Dale, we've got another text. And I just want to say, um, this is James. Good evening, James, and glad to have you on the show. Welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Thank you for texting in. Um, he's sent us a message saying that he's wanting us to look at RMD. What are our thoughts? Short to medium term trade for growth. Purchase if it trades above 24.15. Initial stop loss, 21.14. Hmm. What do you think, Dale? Are you looking at it there? Well, I'm starting to look You're at it. You're trying to get your thing. Oh, come on, quick. Can you put some lines on the chart oh, for I'm us, please? There. So I'm getting there. I'm all only right, a 21, mere mile. 14. 24. It's got a stop loss underneath all of that. 24. That's 29. Now, you 20, and I both like yeah. this stock. And we've, we we had do. this on the show, oh, I think it was some weeks ago. And we thought we just can't wait mm -hmm. to see ResMed take off. Oh, look, I'm together. totally agreeing. It, it's, you know, uh, look, I mean, if it gets through this level, then you'd probably go, OK, it could be a nice little buy for medium to longer term. But, but it'd be higher risk right at it'd that it'd point, It'd be higher it? risk at the moment. And we can see here it's really, if I put the lock back on it again, we can see here it's dropped, you know, 48%. So you'd think it's finding some support. But, hey, if it, if it starts to turn around, it could fall below the low of that. Um, mm. And so that's all I'd be worried about, making sure there's a lot of indecision right through here. But I do like it. I think it's a great stock. Mm. I think he's right. As long as he's done his bit of research, he's got a nice stop loss underneath. I don't have a problem with it. It's a nice big stock. So it is a nice big stock. It's good to see that he's got quality shares. Uh, and as list. I said, you both you and me are excited about this stock, mm. and I've been waiting for it to put into my portfolio. Excellent. Cool. 
All right, we do have a caller on the line, Janine. Now, I believe we got Barry on the line. Welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Barry, you're on with Dale and Janine here. How are you? Thanks very much, Dale and Janine. Really appreciate your show. Oh, that's my our question, pleasure, mate. What's your question? My question is about Yang Coal, hmm? Y-A-L. Um, and it has a, um, a price-earnings ratio of 2.29 today. Hmm? Um, now, its value has been going down, but the, uh, the earnings and the uh, dividend are really great. So would you buy a stock based on the dividend or would you um, be sceptical of it? Now, the price can't go down much more, I wouldn't think. Mm. Yeah, normally dividends go up while the price goes down because that's just normally how it works. But, um, yeah, yeah but, um, so you don't own it at the moment, but you're looking to buy it. That's what you're saying? I've, I have some, a small amount a in small it, but I'm, look, I'm thinking about spending more. Okay, you're short, medium or long term? Um, long term. Okay, well, I've, Janine's brought it up, so I'll get her to have a look at it and make some comments. But thank you very much for calling into the show. Thank you. All right then, yeah. Dale. So first question is, would you buy because of the dividend? Definitely not. Definitely not. No, that's my sometimes answer. that's a, a, sort of like a carrot. It is a bit of a carrot, isn't it? Trying to help support the share price and mm. trying to get investors to help support it and prop it up. At the moment, no, I'm not excited by it. It doesn't matter how big the dividend is. At the moment, there's no confirmation it's going up yet. Yeah, so, mm. okay, so we're going to have a look at the chart. So basically he's got a small mm. position, so I'm assuming he wants to top that up for well, that. Medium. it could be good long term, mm. just looking at it from mm. a big picture right, perspective. So looking at the chart, yeah. Looking at the chart, it could be, um, because we are seeing some sort of like a basing pattern. It's going sideways down here. This is the it monthly, is looking good though, isn't monthly it? chart. It is looking interesting. Mm. But look, if we come to the more um, recent rise that we've seen on the, the stock. So in 2021, it bottomed out. This is a really nice little move to see that sort of bottoming pattern unfold and then the str strong rise. But, you know, it could take out this low in the short term. So I'd just be watching that. Um, there's a big gap there on the monthly chart. It's not to say that it couldn't take out the low in June 2023 mm -hmm. and come back to that point first. So that's really what I'd be cautioning against at this point in time. In terms of the weekly, there is no reason to buy right now. There's no hurry, I guess is all I'd be saying. I'm not saying mm. no. I'm just saying there's no hurry to buy. Mm. No, I don't think, I, I think you're absolutely correct. I don't think there's a hurry to buy. I think, you know, we're talking about you could have bought it way back there in, you know, 2022 for the same price as you are right now. So it hasn't really fallen away too much. And if we look at from this, you know, let me click on this to make sure it works. Um, if we go here to these lows, you know, we're talking about 40%. It's fallen, so it's fallen a fair way. Um, but I wouldn't get excited till it blew through that at 563. So I wouldn't try mm. to get in it early. Yeah, fair enough. Um, um, and, you know, if it got through that, then I'd think it'd be a nice little buy for you to top up to get a better position on that stock. But I like mm. it. I okay. actually like it at the moment. Just Great. a little bit cautious like you. Yeah, I think it was a really good question. Good, mm. good stock to ask about. Thanks very much. All right, now we have uh, an email question. The next question, which is from Dennis. Hi, I used to listen live, but with work, it's very hard to do so. I was particularly interested in your thoughts and chart for AMA Group, Australia's largest smash repairer. I've purchased shares at 6.3 cents on the way down, um, on the way down and 5 cents on the way back up. Whoops. The stock seems oversold, falling 90 plus percent at one point. Thanks, Dennis. Look, Dennis, we're going to have a look at that for you right now. Thanks so much for um, sending us that message and sending an email in. We're just going to have a look. Dale, how's it looking? Um, yeah, so I are you excited not, about it? Not a hope in hell. I'm excited about this stock. No? Okay. Can we just see the monthly chart first in full? Yeah, let's bring it all up. Yep. And expand it out, please. Contracted or expanded? I'm just getting a bit demanding now, but that's okay. You are. I've got a wife that does that. I can't see the whole thing. Sorry? You just... Yeah. I, okay. I'll just go this way. Oh. So if we're looking across the long-term picture, it hasn't taken out that low. And that's one of the things that I think is important about this share right now, the fact that that low is intact and it's just stopped just above it, because this could be the end of an overall long-term decline, this fall that we've just seen down into the low could here be. in October 2023. Mm -hmm. That's the positive side at the moment. It doesn't mean it will be, though. We have to look at the shorter-term picture to see what that indicates. So what we're saying here is if we look at the um, just go right back up to that high and come down again. We can see it's recently potentially crossed through that, the angle of that um, fall, which is really important. But there's no confirmation at this point whether that's sustainable. Yeah, I mean, to me, I, I just, 
I don't know why he's bought there, and, and a lot of people do try and buy stocks like mm. this because they seem cheap. But then, you know, he, as he's found, he's bought some at six and then he's bought some at five. Yep. And that's a 20% difference in those two buy prices just on that. So to me, that's, a, you know, to me, that's why we talk about trade on confirmation, not speculation. Mm -hmm. Too many people buy something because they think it's cheap only for it to fall further. So where do you think it could go? Um, look, I, look, it's has that stopped falling? And you know, you're right, there's, there's zero, zero confirmation that it stopped falling and that this, this recent low uh, that we can see here is in fact the low. There's whilst we've had you know one, two, three, four, five, six weeks up through there, you know, and it has moved from um, four cents right up to ten cents. So there's a massive move there, and that's why some people get involved in mm. it because they see this massive percentage move. But I, it's too risky for my book. Okay, I'd I agree. stay out. Totally, totally yeah, I'd have stay to out. agree with him, unfortunately, on this one. Yeah. Glad you're agreeing with me. All right, Janine. <laughs> As you mentioned earlier, tonight's topic is all about finding the hottest stocks under $10 that have a potential to rise by a whopping 20%. Now, that's got me excited. Well, you said it, and given how the market has been right now, it's the best time to go fishing and find the stocks that might be a good catch. Now, these tend to be the ones that have been sold off heavily. Well, don't get me wrong, 20% is great, but I'm sure, Janine, some of the ones you will show us could make more than 20%. Yes, with some of the ones that I have, there is the potential for much greater gains. Now, if the market rises with them, anything could be, anything's possible. <laughs> so, so are we going to do the usual process and take a deep dive into the sectors first and, and then use the top-down review to narrow down the selection, or have you gone over the top and used a more complex process? Oh, well, me, complex. Mm. Are you having a dig? I've actually kept the process searching for these stocks quite simple. Well, I believe that when I see it, Janine. <laughs> Hopefully you'll share the filters that you're using and run through the steps with everybody. Of course. Now, as you know, what we end up with is determined by how we filter things, which brings to mind a quote from American actor Malcolm Jamal Warner, who said... And he's one of my favourite, he comes from one of my favourite movies, or he comes from, he was in one of my favourite movies, Fool's Gold. And guess who? With Matthew McConaughey. That's right, heartthrob Matthew McConaughey. Well, that's probably enough said. Back to the point of this, Malcolm said, obviously we all look at things through the filter of our own experiences. So what's your point? You know, you're saying that how we filter stocks has a direct relationship with our own experiences? Well, yes. Beginners in the stock market filter stocks in a vastly different way to those more experienced. And that is why I'm sharing my steps so everyone can see what I do. So on your screen right now is a list of steps to find stocks with the potential to make some great gains. Okay, now your first step is to determine a simple set of criteria to create a watch list. And in this case, Janine, I believe you're looking for ASX stocks, stocks currently priced below $10. Yes, that is correct. So keep the search as broad as possible initially, but I also wanted to make sure that we didn't end up with a lot of illiquid stocks. So the second step is very important, and that is to add a filter minimum. So I excluded stocks below $1, and Optima allows you to do this very easily. Well, it is a great program. Um, did, hey, did you know that I did an interview with the founder and CEO of Optima recently? Yeah. Um, and we released it the past week on talkingwealth.com, and we talked about quantitative analysis and market phases. Now, that's not rocket science, um, but check it out. It was extremely interesting and absolutely full of valuable information. Now, again, whilst I think of it, if you're thinking about starting our diploma course, we have a special offer right now where we include our Optima or include Optima in your tuition. So what's that's next, That's fantastic. Janine? Well, you can filter out a lot more stocks at the start by also entering a filter for market cap or you can cut them out in the watch list after you create it. Now this brings us to step three. And here I want to filter out stocks below a certain market cap so as to narrow down the list. Now my preference is $500 million. Okay, now what about the listed managed farms and the ETFs, what are you gonna do with them? Well, that's a really great question. Now, I'm way ahead of you on that step, and I've got step four. Take them out of the watch list. I've left the REITs in, as there could be some great opportunities there. Okay. Now, if that's all the criteria, how about we create a workbook and a watch list so the viewers can get an idea of what we're saying. Now, let's take a look at the process. 
All right. Yep, so now you're going to show that on Optima? This is where it gets really interesting. So on the screen sure right now, <laughs> um, we have what Optima call a scanning manager. Yeah. Now, this is a fantastic little tool where you can set multiple criteria. So here we can actually run through a security selection and we can choose the ASX, you know, you know this yourself anyway, mm. ASX 50, ASX 20, ASX 200, 300, whatever we want to choose. 50, there, 20, And there are so small many caps. sets of criteria to use, as in tools that in within Optima. And you can code your own. You can code thing. your own stuff in there as well. It's just so Not flexible. Not that I know how to code. Yeah. Okay, so in doing that, it's, this is how easy it is. Once you've got the criteria into the scanning manager, you simply hit that execute scan. And we're not going to do that because it'll take No, because a few I minutes. was so excited. I really wanted to do this as part of the show, but because it took so long, I was, you know, obviously... Well, it's not long. It's a few minutes. Well, but it was exciting pretty for me, but they might be <laughs> bored. Well, it might take a couple of minutes to scan, <laughs> but it's probably going to be boring watching it scan. Yeah, so look, we do the scan, and then we can export the results, and we can export it straight into the workbook like we did, and you can see behind there that we've got a watch list or you can yep. bring up stock charts. Um, there's multiple different ways of bringing that up. We can yeah. just save it for oh, later. No. There's so many different ways. And you just save so, your scan to do it another day. Yeah, so that's lovely, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. awesome. All right, so there's the watch list that we actually created as a result of doing that scan. So, And watch lists can vary in terms of the information that you, you put in those. Oh, so yeah. in this case, I've got the company name, the code, the last price, the percentage change. Now, this is on daily. Asset class, whether it's a stock or something else, a unit trust, um, market cap, and we've got the market cap. So then I can just, this beauty about this is I can just click market cap and it just then filters everything and I can set it up so that I've got the biggest stocks at the top or I might want the penny, you know, the smaller stocks at the bottom um, and filter from that way. I know you can do a lot of stuff. You can add lots and lots of columns too, like fundamental yeah. information. You can add multiple oh, different things. Can we can add RRG graph information onto that watch list Yeah, obviously well. the more that you filter with, more um, functionality that you use in the mm. scanning manager, the more you can filter out. Now in this case, I think I ended up with 140 stocks. Which is out really of a lot of people that. say to me, wow, out of 300. Got, how, do you find, how do you find stocks to watch when you've got yeah. so many that pop up? And that's the problem with a lot of people with scanning managers. Mm. They go, they pops up so many stocks to look at and it gets That's overwhelming. Right. So why not, just, we could start with the 100 and then mm. we we can narrow it down that way and then cut mm. back market cap, but obviously you'd need to cut it back a lot more than that. You just need to get a feel for So you're going to cut is. this back further? So, no way. Why I like to have all the stocks there. Okay, so, but you're supposed to be teaching people good habits. Well, you said simple and I went a little bit more away from that, didn't I? So you went OTT. <laughs> okay, so where do we go to from here? All right. So, look, so in terms yeah. of where we go to from here, we'll actually run an example shortly. We'll look through an example and look at some stocks. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the full list anyway, and how about we bring up the watch list? So we just created these to find the hot stocks that you've been telling everyone about. So let's get into We're going to look at the charts now, are we? Well, look, I, first of all, before we do that, I just wanted to say, mm -hmm. now, when I first started looking... So I want to look at all the charts of all of well, these. Well, can I just look at this? Oh, I'm going to take you down that path. Just slow down a little bit. Okay. Okay? Um, so first of all, I, if you look at the list, and say we wanted to look at the ones that were negative, yeah. and we can just look at that. I just had a random walk through this list. Now, people might be thinking, well, how did you pick the stocks that you picked? Yes. So, and it was, it was a random walk. So... So sort of essentially anybody could pick these. I do these. a random walk when I get drunk. <laughs> I mean, you and I have got the advantage because we can look at a chart and say, you know, pick up Dexas, for example, and we can look at that and say, okay, um, looking at the monthly chart, it's just turned up really strongly. Maybe this, and look at the weekly, maybe mm. it could take off. There's a trend line there. So you're and not just, scanning any of these fundamentally or adding a fundamental criteria on these? What I'm saying is that you could do that, but I've picked mm. these first lot randomly, okay? Okay, gotcha. So what I'm trying to say is that if you really narrowed down the search criteria at the start, say you came up with 20 instead of 140. Which is pre preferable. Which is prefer preferable, and then you could have some fundamentals in there, like you say, or other things in yeah, the watch EPS, list. Dividend yield, yeah, dividend yield, other stuff we want to put Then it will be so much simpler for individuals. But like you said, 
people tend to want to look at heaps of stocks, like I've and just done. And I don't done. want to do that. I want to look at a targeted group of stocks. Well, so the better you know the scanning manager, the smaller your list can become, depending on... It's all about inputs mm. and outputs. Yeah. So the more defined that you are in the criteria of your search, remember, mm -hmm. start with the end in mind. So your your okay. end point is getting just a, a dozen stocks or something, so is it? assume I don't know anything about the stock market. I know that's hard for you to do. <laughs> But what would, what's the most important stuff you're going to look at? So what you've already shared, so pick a so market cap. That's a great place to start, the market okay. cap, making yeah. sure you eliminate those small stocks out of there first. Mm -hmm. And you could just look at, like we have on previous shows, you could just look at the top 20, the biggest ones that come up in the search via yep. market capitalisation if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but what I want to show you next is that I've just put them all onto an RRG graph because I couldn't let them all go at this point. You know, we're talking about fishing and I just caught, I've <laughs> so caught a bit of a So a bit of a fish. water, that's what you're telling me. No, it's about fishing, mate. It's about fishing. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we've got a, a lot here um, in the bucket and now it's about choosing um, stocks on this list. So looks like you're shoot, It looks like you're fishing with a shotgun. <laughs> so you'd get excited about this list, right? Because you've mm -hmm. got so many in the red to choose from, but you could make a watch list just out of the ones that appear in that red section. You can. And, right? and uh, that would cut it down mm -hmm. significantly again. Absolutely. And I can mm. do that and, we, and I can bring up a watch list with just those on those. Yeah. Um, using Excellent. Optima, but I won't now, show you how I to do that. Now what I did is I did choose five because it's mm -hmm. about five stocks that could give so 20% growth. So how did you choose growth. those five? As I said, these ones were just the random walk. Well, that didn't tell me anything. Okay, so mm. you can keep moving on. We're going to get we're going to get to that very You're soon. You're keeping me in suspense. I am definitely keeping you in suspense. Okay, so how about we look at a chart? Um, we want to look at a chart. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we've got fo the five stocks here. Um, South 32. Right, that was one. So I that, am so excited about this stock, but I, and it's so up, frustrating at the moment because I can't get into it. Well, see, this came up in the random walk, mm -hmm. and I just want to go back just briefly because you suggest that if stocks are moving into this red section, they're Correct. the hot ones. But it's just interesting that they all came up in that area, and I didn't mm -hmm. cheat. Okay, so well, I didn't, didn't look at the RRG would. graph to start with. Um, so now if we go through mm -hmm. this lift, we can see S32 on the monthly chart has just fallen significantly. So that's one of the things that we could search for, stocks that have fallen by, say, 40%, mm -hmm. or stocks that have fallen by a certain amount, or stocks that have fallen in the last 12 months. So we can set a range too, like between 30 and 50%? We could. We could say mm -hmm. stocks that have fallen by you know, 90% if we wanted to and have mm -hmm. a look at that. So in this case, um, S32 is looking really nice in terms of the setup. And I think that the, we've got the potential to see this rise at least 20%. And let's just grab our percentage here. But at this stage, we've got no entry criteria. So, so there's our 20%. Do you think it would be reasonable to say that S32 could go 20? Uh, look, I reckon this stock could go close to 50% when it take, if it takes yeah. off from where it is right now. Yeah, so, so somewhere between 20, I think 20 and 35 percent or 34 yeah. percent, but you're saying could be 50. Well, if it, yep. as I said, if it get, gets a bit of momentum behind it, but easily 20 percent, no problems at all. Now, how much we ha do we have to give away off the bottom before we can get in? Probably in, in this case, at least 10. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. So that's the first one. Depends on how aggressive you are. Are you liking it? Is that all you're talking about on this one? That's the first. Unless you wanted to talk about something else. It's just not ready yet, but it's hot to no, me because it's, a, it's about this is to a, turn this around. Is a really, if you look at the monthly chart, and this is the really important thing. Mm. And, I, and I, I say this, it's too many people, I was saying this um, on a recording I did yesterday, it's too many people just go straight to the daily chart and, and mm -hmm. really forget about the monthly chart. The monthly chart tells you everything that you need to know. True. Everything you need to know, and and so, and a lot of people ignore it. But this is just a beautiful trending stock. Beautiful trend up, beautiful trend down, beautiful trend up, another beautiful trend down. So easy to trade, mm. and yet so many people try and trade these, you know, under dollar stocks, penny, ten cents, twenty cents stocks. They make their job really, really hard. Mm. And this will do. This will do twenty, thirty percent easily. That's a really good point. It really will, and 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 people focus on lots rather than narrowing down their focus, which is what you're talking about, narrowing down the focus using different criteria mm. just to select the best ones. Yep. Um, and you've done this. Now, if we scan those top 100 stocks, or those 100 stocks in that workbook, we could probably scan them in 20 minutes just really quickly, mm. and we could pick 
five or ten stocks and just focus on that exactly. with our knowledge. But if you don't have the knowledge, then how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And that's where you add lots more criteria. That's to where it. you're adding the extra criteria. But I do like this at the moment, and I do think you know it's worth putting on your watch list. It's worth doing some testing on it. Yeah, because look at the like volume. you're like so talking about the extra criteria, anybody can look at the fundamentals of this stock and decide whether that's the, you know, so you have to decide is it EPS or PE ratio or something like that that you're going to add in there to mm. filter out stocks. Mm. But in, in effect, it doesn't really matter what stocks you've got on the watch list because unless they're penny dreadfuls or really small stocks, most stocks mm. are going to go up when the market goes up. Correct. So it doesn't, you know, right. it's just a question of by how much. I like this one. What's your mm. next one? All right, S32. Yeah. IGO is the next one. This is one that um, obviously it's one of the. Um, you haven't talked about iron this for a while, ore. have you? No, this is looking really interesting, isn't it? Mm. So it's one of the iron ore stocks that's actually slowed the fall just recently, and I'm just going to show you how far we've seen this one. So this one's come back around 50%, which Ooh. is looking really nice. Yeah, I heard you say, oh, do you want to say that again? Ooh. Yeah, so now it doesn't mean that the fall's over though, obviously, because there's no confirmation. This is the weekly chart, and ordinarily you would expect to see a bit of movement mm -hmm. around this level before it then takes off. So um, very early stages at this point, but again, if we just quickly go back to the RRG of where that was sitting, mm -hmm. IGO's it's coming, not ready yet. It's not ready, but it's coming at this red section at the rate of knots. That's mm. one of the things that I thought was interesting. It's if you not... just asked me to look at that, I'd mm. say CWI, clean away, and AZJ would be two, my two picks right now. Yeah, okay. Right, that's interesting. We'll, we'll so check to those in. We'll we check will. those shortly anyway. Mm. So looking at this, we still have a few weeks off, but I would just... This is the time where everybody can mm. start preparing for, for these. It's Hot stocks are in the making at the moment, and there's quite a lot of them preparing for that. So it's it's about really setting yourself up to be able to take advantage of those when they trigger rules. Now, so how do they do and that? And they can keep watching the show because obviously they can email in to us, they can mm. call in about stocks, they can... Um, you know, text in about the stocks mm. and we'll give you updates on them as we go through as the market starts to make its moves. So that's IGO. No, um, keep moving on. You're just you're running on really, really quickly. Yeah, but here. I want to get to a more important point. Do you want to what talk do you want to talk about IGO and what it's doing, big picture? Well, I want to look at it a little bit more because, okay. you know, at the end of the day, we've got to look at this this stock and it's quite look, a I don't it's think there's too stock. much more to say. It's around 50%. It's found support mm -hmm. on its the previous all-time high, which was the GFC peak. Which is there. this one over here, yeah. Yep. And we now just have to have a set of rules to buy it. How would we mm -hmm. do that? Well, you could buy that on the monthly chart. The chart's actually showing you that the history indicates that you could trade it on a, a more aggressive rule on the monthly chart that on we teach chart. students. yeah. But you could also wait for the weekly rules, which could be, you know, four to six weeks away before that unfolds. But this isn't, I wouldn't put this down as a buy and hold stock. I'd put this down as a stock that is a tra definite trading stock. So you, you would yep. think, think that the level of knowledge and skill somebody need would be higher for this stock than a normal, another stock. Well, in theory, this stock S32 could get... S32 would be easier yeah, for yeah. a beginner. True, but this stock could, be, could get mm. to where you want it to go quicker. Once Absolutely, because we're talking about right now, it's sitting at around that eight nine dollars, and that all time high is sitting there at at seventeen dollars. So mm. that's nearly doubling price exactly. to get to that. So I'll let you get on with the next right. one now, if you like. Okay, so 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 far, S thirty two is first, IGO second. Okay. Okay, that's what you're saying, isn't it? At this point in time, yes. All right. Now next we've got Ace Horizon Holdings, mm -hmm. which has really struggled um, for a long time. Not not just um, with you know in the mm -hmm. last couple of years where the market's been going sideways. If you look back, March mm -hmm. 2014, it kept mm -hmm. on trying to break through this level at around five six dollars, five fifty six dollars, and has struggled. And COVID really put an end to that. It's like a reset, I think, well. for this one. So there's so much support underneath all of these lows here, which there's I'm really liking. Massive amounts moment. of support. Yeah, but we still don't have confirmation. This is a sort of stock too that has the potential to make some really good gains and probably um, more than what I've suggested. Um, so what, you know, almost 50%? Another one, almost 50%. Another one. Um, so if we grab this high here and we drag that down there we can see that the stocks actually even come down and found support on that line it's on the other side of the line at the moment which is interesting so i'm really liking the way that that's unfolding nice support mm -hmm. uh, crossed the trend line come back tested it we've now got some resistance overhead it's not confirmed yet 
So well, what it's already are you done. Saying? It's already done twenty percent rise off that low. Then it's come back from that high down to here, which is down fifteen percent off that high. Yeah. So just to get back through that previous high. We're talking about a range of nearly 20%. Mm. So you would think if things are easily going to do 20%, but you have to, but you have to let you have to let some of that go. So you have to look at the weekly chart to see where you can get in. I have to let it go. Why? Well, go to the weekly chart and you can choose Do, do I have your to? entry. Mm. And if, but you're telling me I have to let it go. Um, I'm just saying you might have to let it go a bit before you decide to buy. So. If we're looking at the trend line that came down all the way over the top there and it found support on it, we've got shorter term um, an angle of the current trend coming down here that we could actually apply another line to. Yeah. But at the moment it hasn't tested this low here. So I guess I'd like ideally for it to come back and test that low. It looks like it's trying to do that now. Yep. If it takes out the no, um, let's just expand that up because I can't even see that. It looks like it's already tested the bottom there, actually, with these two lows here. So, mm. you know what? Um, depending on how the back testing came up, it may even work on a trend line. Yeah, but I, look, I don't discount it. I think, you know, we do need to probably see that low, you know, um, you know tested. So, mm. move up, little move down and started to move up. It could be getting in somewhere around this sort of highs, around that 370 issue. If it did that, there's an easy 20% in this one. Yeah. In the short term, um, and I would suggest if it got through this sort of level, that $4 mark there, um, then there's an upside. More medium term. Well, mm. even that, you know, we're, even that's over 10 or 15% mm. on top of that. So I yeah. easily think it would do 20%. Okay, so th does this one tick the boxes? Yep, ticks all the boxes for okay, me. So I like it. Do you like, like this one better than S32? Or you nope. Okay, so it's second in line or third in line? No, I'm being a bit biased. I do like S32. Okay, so does this go I've second? I've made money on it before, so is that right? I can't get an answer out of him Sorry. now. Sorry. I'll stop You're talking. doing a Janine. Does this go second or third? That's second. Okay. All right. So, so let me just move this it. and then AGO. And yep. now we've got the the fourth stock in the list. Oh, I like this oh, one. Oh, I knew you would. I like this. This one. looks really interesting. So we've liked this stock for so long, just waiting for this to bottom out. Now let's just really. So did you get close into your eyes and throw darts at those hundred stocks, or and I did because you said you randomly walked through them. I random walked. Hope you took your shoes off. Well, I guess it's not completely random because in my brain, I have um, some you, idea you, you of what the, what the stocks look like. But I like it. You know, I just went, yep, I like these. Yep, went through the list. Okay, so Linus, okay. Um, looking at the way that it's unfolded, we can see that the low here is $6.02. And, and the next one, guess what? $6.02. Right, so this is really nice. We like these sort of moves on stocks where they make these lows and then come back and test them. That's what we've been sort of explaining to everybody, haven't we? Mm. Um, and talking about the importance of the retesting of these lows in the short term, which is what Linus has actually been able to do. So now, Dale's just, you're just applying a trend line to the chart to see. Oh, that's no, just to momentum, just to see where it is, so. Okay, just to but, indicate that it mm. may have a little bit to go to get through that line. Well, it, it is, it might have a little bit to go, but I think, you know, if, we, if it sort of got through this sort of level there, you're easily gonna find easily 20% from that because it's from there to there we're talking as 46% from that point mm. to its all-time high so to me if it got to that point there then it's broken this sort of side the small side where you've moved and when you get this sort of pattern normally when you get about to this near the apex it'll break up or mm. down one of the two my guess is it's going to break up okay. I like it all right so let's just have a look quickly at the yeah. weekly chart yeah and it's that sort of nice little basing pattern that we can see there and look mm. i'd you know be quite excited if it breaks out through these highs here in the mm. short term i would but, be too mm, looks nice doesn't it i'm 50 50 between that and <laughs> s32 at the front oh yeah yeah put that one do you want me two. to just take you back to just, s32 no, just, put can... just put it at number two number two just put it number two all right next and number five clean we've away. got clean away now, clean away. If you remember where it was in the in the RRG graph, it's it's right here. Yeah. It's close to the centre, so it's not showing huge volatility, which is interesting for a mm. lower cap stock like mm. this one. So more dependable potentially, not as high risk as what someone people might think because yep. of its lower liquidity, and yet here it is turning up again, according to the RRG, and we've seen a couple of weeks off this low, but. Let's just have a look at what's happening here on the now that's such a picture. good stock for more be more beginners to trade. Look at it. It looks interesting, doesn't it, from a beginner's mm. point of view, mm. in terms of the fact that it's come back to this level. 
Um, it's still got some resistance around the, this level here at around, what's that, $2.60? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we'd want to see it really take off strongly above that level before we'd be, you know, confident with it in the, in the medium term. But short term, it's probably going to be quite nice. Looking at how it's unfolded, let's just get an idea of the downside that we've seen on the stock. Now, 33% to the downside mm. is what it's done. So is it possible that we could see it come back 40%, 50% like some of these it's other... It's possible. It is possible. I think it's looking good right now. I do like it. I think it deserves to be on your list. I just want to see a test of this low. And if it tested this low and stayed above it and turned up again, I love it. Mm. I think, Looks again, interesting, another doesn't one, it? it easily do 20%. Totally agree with you. Okay, excellent. Now, I mean, the the interesting thing was that all of these stocks mm. appeared in that red section and it mm. was just a matter of looking for the needle in the haystack. Mm. Well, I think you found several needles. <laughs> very nice. You like very, that? Very, very nice. Well, thank you very much for that. Did you... Do I need to clear my ears out then? That was very nice. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to do the other, other 95 in the bonus content Oh, later the bonus on. content, we've got some more interesting stuff to go through. Oh, even more, okay. It's cool. one of the things that you like to do at the workshops. Okay, cool. Mm. Well, that's it for our topic tonight. We've still got plenty of stocks to go through, but before we get into these, for those watching on YouTube, you can watch all of tonight's show plus the exclusive content on TalkingWealth.com. The members only bonus content includes a more in-depth approach to lots more stocks and more detailed answers to your questions. You also get to watch Dale's weekly Australian stock market report where he shares his view on the market and where opportunities may arise. And there's more. You also get access to hundreds of interviews with industry experts from around the globe. So what are you waiting for? Secure your free seven day subscription by visiting talkingwealth.com. Okay, right, right now we're going to get into some more questions. So now's your time to pick up your phone and give us a call on 92909988. That's 03 for Melbourne, 92909988. Um, or you can text the number on your screen if you want to text us. While we wait for your call, let's get into our next email. Now it's uh, the next email, which is from Peter. And Peter says, hi, Dale and Janine. My question is around time exit stops. What is your strategy or how long would you give a stock if it's done nothing or in a sideways move before selling and moving capital elsewhere? Thanks, Peter. Mm, that's a good question. I'd Could say how long is a piece of string? Yeah, I know. Could depend on your um, strategy in terms of the dividends, because if a stock's just trading sideways and it's not threatening to the downside or looking like it's you know likely so to plunge. So if it's paying a good dividend and you like those dividends. Paying a good dividend, on. fully frank dividends, going sideways, and with the potential to rise from a bigger picture perspective, then mm -hmm. you would hang on to it until it tells you that it's more likely to go the other way. I think the, the answer to, the, to Peter's question is... is What's the context? Yeah, that's a good point. If you're point. talking about if it's a small, small cap stock, mm. it could be three days, three weeks, three months. If it's a big blue chip stock, it could be three months to 18 months or two years. Mm. If you, as I said, if you're looking at dividend yields, if it's a good dividend, there's a lot of different things around all that. So it's not just a one size fits all answer. I know I've had stocks that have gone sideways on me for months on end, mm. and then all of a sudden I've just doubled my money because mm. you. It's always when you sort of start running out of patience that you sell and then it goes off. Yeah, it's one exactly. of those Murphy's Law or whatever they talk about it. But as long as it's... Because we've had two years of sideways move, haven't we? I know. It's really and this it's is really, really challenging, unusual. isn't it? Nearly three years of sideways mm. move with this COVID stuff. That's unusual for mm -hmm. lots of stocks to be doing that. So I can understand people getting frustrated mm -hmm. um, and thinking, oh, geez, this stock's never... Like Telstra, mm. not moving up. Commonwealth Bank. Commonwealth Bank, yeah. Mm. Both look all right, but they're just not doing anything. But exactly. So not one size for size fits all answer, Peter. So sorry for not giving you a more definitive answer. Now, before we get into our next question, remember to hit that like button and show your support for our channel by clicking subscribe. It helps spread the message of how crucial getting the right education is. All right, we have a text now from Angela who wants to bring up um, Fisher and Puck, I think, FPH. 
Um, he says he's tuning in tomorrow, so he's not actually watching live, so he's going to watch us on Talking Wealth TV. Thank you for being a, a member of TalkingWealth.com. Now, he says, I haven't bought in. However, it is looking like an opportunity that may present itself in the coming weeks. Thanks for a great show, asking our thoughts. So thank you very much for sending your text in. You can be just like him and text the number on your screen. If you do want to chat to Janine, pick up the phone and give us a call on 92909988. We'd love to chat. Okay, Fisher so do you think he's right? Have a look at the chart. Right about what? Have a sneak e peek. Messaging it the could show. be going up. I don't know. You looked at it. I, I think it looks interesting. Does it? Yeah. Look, I think we need to see a little bit more momentum on the upside in the short term before we can confirm that. Does Looking look at that monthly chart, as long as that low in October holds, then you know we're going up. But that's mm. really the question that, that, that I have at the moment is just making sure that you've got the safety net in there to confirm that. But this little move looks beautiful. It's I'm come a little down. bit more cautious than you, I think. It's come down. Yeah, look, I just said before, like, it could take out Did this you? low in October. So I'm agreeing with you. I don't think that you would try to do that. <laughs> so if we look at this move up um, all the way to around 25, mm -hmm. I think it was 25.90. 26. $26, and then the pullback. It's enough of a pullback in price to mm -hmm. test it. Now, if we got trend line confirmation, a couple of other rules mm -hmm. ticking the boxes, um, there's a potential that we could see a move up from here. So I'd just be waiting mm -hmm. for that. And not only that, the stop loss could be quite tight if it starts to move up. And that's one of the things that you've got to look for when you're wanting to buy a stock, especially one like this um, that does that has had a big fall, is wanting to see that there's um, a nice point where you can mm. put your stop loss. So it's fallen 30%. That's enough. Uh, yeah, I know. But that's what worries me because, you know, obviously if mm. that rise up from $16.11 right through to that high mm -hmm. um, there in, in May, it's fallen nearly 30% of that range. So... But if we look at, if I just put this little tool on here and we look at that, it rose from that point to that point in 30 weeks. And it's gone from this point to that point in 26 weeks. So it's nearly fallen the same amount of time it rose, but it's fallen about 30% of it. So if this thing turns around and starts to fall around, I think it's more bearish than bullish. Yeah, well, look, I'd agree with you. Mm. If it starts to come back to that line and breaks below your dashed line there, mm. I'd definitely agree with that. I would have liked to have seen, if it had fallen 30% over, you know, 8 to 10 weeks, mm, probably a little bit less, and it's starting to look like this, I'd be more excited about it. And if it fell only 20%, I'd be even more excited about mm. it. But I'd like to see, and if you look, you look at these bars, there's a lot of indecision look, through here. I guess you've got to so. also think about the way the, mm. the market's been talking about mm. healthcare stocks, and they've yeah. been really punished, right? Mm. So if healthcare takes off, this is going to get mm. some upside mm. with it. So well, hopefully. I guess from what you're... Just to counsel your point of view, I would mm. say potentially it may be more short to medium term than mm. more medium to long term at this point. Yeah, mm. I mean, again, if it broke through that, I'd be excited about 21.10, but you're seeing reducing volume through here, so I'd like to see volume increase as well. So that's mm. my thoughts. But okay, beautiful. Good pick anyway. Mm. I do right. like it. Now, remember, if you want to chat to us, make sure you pick up the phone and call us now on 92909988. That's 03 for Melbourne. Or if you're a bit shy, like Janine is, email us at info at wealthwithin.com.au so we can answer your question in next week's show. Now, we have a question from Sunny. And Sunny says, hello, Dale and Janine. I hope you're both well. Yes, we are. I love watching your show, so please continue with the good work. I'm wondering if you could share your opinion on Aussie Broadband. Uh, it appears they have done recent capital raising and I would expect this company to grow. I don't hold it yet. Um, what would you say should be a decent entry point and whether it would be worth investing for medium to long term, six to 12 months, regards Sunny? Um, we can have a look at that. Six to 12 months, is that long term in your book? No, that's short term. So short term, short to medium term. medium term. Well, yeah. it depends on who, what your perspective is. It depends on whether you've done our course, what you think it could be medium term. Mm -hmm. So looking at this here, we've got, um, if I drag that down. This looks all right. Let's grab that there. Um, we've already seen it go more than, what, around 70% mm. off that bottom. Yeah. Then with the next rise, we've seen off this low here in July that it went up 63%. Mm. So if we use that as just an idea for what it could do off this low, then, you know, there's Keep a gap going. there. Keep going. Well, Keep going. Keep going. you're saying the high. Definitely, you know, there's a gap well, that's here. that's 50%. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. 
We're looking after Sunny. Well, it's getting smaller by 10%. So I'm just saying, let's just take a conservative <laughs> measure and say, okay, what if it does go to that gap that's about 50% from that high? But if you were to get in, Dale, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be getting in so, before so that high. So is this high Janine's then, law of diminishing returns? It is. It's maths. Okay. So let's have a look at, see that high there? Yeah. Um, it's about 20 what did I say? 20, 25, 26 percent from that mm. point there. Mm. But that looks beautiful why it's just moved up, come back, moved up, come back so far for one month. Looking really, really nice on that. Would you buy it now? Time. Answer is no. Would I buy it now? No, I wouldn't mm. be buying it now. But I think, you know, if I got through that high there, 429, you'd have a good stab at it, wouldn't you? You would. Mm. I think it'd look really, really nice. And volumes are not too bad. There's actually a lot more uh, volume coming through since sort of August than it was in the early part of this year. So I'd like to see um, it volume move up a little bit more if it took off here, through here. But this is only two days at the moment, this, la this last bar. So if it closed higher this week and higher on the bar, you know, a lot nice. of indecision, mm. a lot of resistance around here. You can see all these mm. opens and closes really tight. But I think if it got through Look, that level... Look, it's done that before. I mean, we've seen these yeah, opens and closes back mm. around here. I like it. And eventually it just took off through that and went higher. So I, think he's, I think Sonny's a superstar. I think he's picked an interesting stock. No, I think he's a superstar. Mm. I like it. I think he should be emailing us more. <laughs> okay. I think he should email us every There's single an invitation. week. Yeah. What do you reckon? Mm. I agree. All right. Well, that's it for is it AAB or ABB, I think it was anyway. I think that's all we've got for that. But we do hope you enjoyed our show on YouTube. Now, remember to show your support for us by commenting below this video after we finish the show because we'd love to hear your favorite part of the show also give us a big thumbs up it helps new people discover these videos and we'd also appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel so that you know when we go live for those watching via talking wealth stay tuned for the bonus content that we promised you in next week's show we get into some of the top small cap stocks that are set to outperform the best blue chip stocks in 2024 we'll also answer your questions and so much more. So make sure you put next Tuesday night show on your calendar. Also, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for joining us. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading.